What's going on, guys? I am Ryan alongside Caleb, your Michigan Storm Chasers. We're going to be doing a video today dedicated to our winter outlook forecast. But we're not just going to tell you what we're thinking. We're going to tell you why we are thinking it's trending this direction for our winter here in Michigan in 2024 and 2025. But first, a quick shout out to our sponsor, Cats Roofing and Siding. They are based in South Central Michigan, primarily Lansing in the Battle Creek area. They do roofing, they do siding, windows, and gutters. Feel free to give them a call. Number's on your screen, 517-485-9886. Tell them that we sent you. They'll appreciate that, as would we. But we're going to dive into our forecast. We went ahead and posted this to our subscribers on Patreon and on subscribers on Facebook and our members here on YouTube as well. So if you're already not, or if you're not a subscriber, you may not already seen this. We just posted it on our Facebook page for the public as well. So maybe you have. But we're going to go a bit, a bit more in depth in this video here, uh, just kind of explain what we're thinking and why we're thinking that. So going over everything we have, we are uh, looking at temperatures this winter, leaning above average. And what that means basically is average temperatures across Michigan, roughly upper 20s, low 30s through that December through about February time period before it starts warming up into the March and April spring time frame. So above average leaning would be more so uh, right around 30 degrees or so, if not just a bit over that when all is said and done. That's not going to mean we're not going to have cold bursts. It just means that when all is said and done, the average temperature throughout the entire winter should be right about average, if not leaning just a bit above that number. So that's the forecast for temperatures. Moving on to the forecast here for precipitation, we are expecting above average precipitation. And that's going to be for the entire state. Uh, average precipitation does vary across the state. It could be snow, it could be ice, it could be freezing rain. Any type of precip goes into that uh, precip total. So while we do have an above average forecast here for precipitation, not all of that may be snow. We could have periods of cold rain, we could have periods of you know freezing rain, stuff like that as well. But we do expect above average precip, and I'm going to say this once, we're expecting about normal in terms of snowfall. What is normal though? We made a couple maps here for the lower peninsula as well as the upper peninsula for about the average lake effect, or sorry, the average snowfall across the state. Now, some areas are going to have lake effect snow that could uh, vary this amount significantly. Like the west side of Michigan could get 60 inches, it could get 150. Uh, it's, it's really dependent on these snow, the lake effect snowfall events. But this is about the average we look at here. East side of Michigan there, 40 to 50 inches. Central Michigan, 50 to 70 plus. And then on the west side where lake effect is more prone, especially northern Michigan as well, 80 to 100 inches of snow. And again, that varies based on lake effect. We go up to the UP though, we're looking at much more in the way of accumulations. The entire UP averages about 80 to 100 plus inches. But there are what we call lake effect uh, zones, so to speak, we highlighted where they do see a lot more snow. Some areas, especially Sault Ste. Marie areas, they can get as much as 300 inches in a year or more at times. But the average here is between about 100 and 250 inches in these lake effect zone areas. So overall, that is your average snowfall. This is not an official forecast, so to speak. But when we talk about average snowfall, these are about the amounts that it could fall between that kind of makes us think, okay, well, it's, it's, you know, it's, about, it's about average. You know, it could be a little bit below, it could be a bit above, but overall, uh, about average. So that's your winter forecast, your outlook for 2024, 2025. Now, there's a lot of details that go into making this forecast. And to explain that more in depth, we have Caleb here with us. Now, these terms are terms that you might hear us talk about throughout the winter within our videos and forecasts. So... Uh, pay attention. Maybe you'll learn something here and helps you uh, understand what the atmosphere is doing and why we think what we think in terms of our forecast for winter 2024 and 25. So, Caleb, go ahead and take it away. Yeah. So just as Ryan mentioned, um, based on our uh, predictions here for winter, our first stop is going to be um, to the central Pacific Ocean right along the equator, our equatorial Pacific. So right now, the uh, Climate Prediction Center is expecting a slow transition into what is known as a La Nina phase. Um, just there where it's highlighted, that is along the equatorial Pacific. That is when waters are a little bit below average in terms of temperature. And it doesn't have to be much. Um, have zero as your baseline. And right now, temperature is looking to be anywhere between a half a degree to a degree below average. Um, that is where we get our La Nina um, but what effect does that have on the jet stream and how we see that throughout winter? Well, we look at something called ENZO, and that is um, 
known as El Nino Southern Oscillation is what that is called. Um, that takes into account um, anywhere between La Nina, El Nino, or um, SSTs all the way from the equatorial Pacific all the way to the northern Pacific Ocean um, up by the Aleutian Islands. And on this graph here, you can see these are all ensemble members, which are different data points within a forecast model. And um, here we see they're dipping below that zero degree baseline here, trending towards a weak La Nina. And um, for those of you that don't know um, exactly how a La Nina forms, really in these switch years last year or over the summer, we we're in what's called a neutral phase. That is when our sea surface temperatures were right around average. And uh, that was coming off of a very strong El Nino that we had last year. And that is when water temperatures are above average, above that zero degree baseline there. And when you have those flip years, a lot of times the trade winds will switch directions as well. And that can bring upwelling um, into account. And that brings deeper cold water up near the surface. Um, kind of like when you go swimming in Lake Michigan one day, it's 70 degrees at the beach. And then the next day you dip your toes in the water and the water is 50 degrees. That is due to um, wind and currents that form upwelling. Same thing happens in the Pacific Ocean. Um, as we move forward here on how that affects our jet stream, um, let's take a look at that. Um, and we'll look at jet stream positioning here. This is what a typical jet stream formation looks like in a La Nina year. Um, the warm waters, or the cooler waters in the equatorial Pacific um, help push that polar jet stream further north. It allows a ridge of high pressure to develop up by the Aleutian Islands. That is called a blocking pattern. That allows that jet stream further north, and it also allows a trough to dig down across the Midwest, Lower Great Lakes region, and typically trends us cooler and damper. Um, with that subtropical jet to the north, it often leaves the southern tier of the United States dry with all that moisture being pulled northward. Um, across the northern tier of the United States. Typically, this would trend snowier and colder, but not always. It can also lead us um, warmer and damper, depending on how far north that polar jet stream is uh, pushed north. And then compare that to a El Nino winter. El Nino winters, you get a more zonal flow, which is where the jet stream is more stable. It's not as meridional or active. So this typically leaves us drier and warmer than average. This is what we saw last winter. Um, this is why a lot of times we were above average. Now, did we get snow last year? Absolutely, we did. Just because we were in an El Nino winter did not eliminate us from snow 100%. Were we below average? Absolutely. Our ski resorts felt it. Our sledders felt it up in the UP. Um, really rough winter uh, for the uh, snow industry there. Hopefully, this winter is a little bit better. Um, now that we're in a La Nina winter or trending to be towards a La Nina winter, this would favor us. Um, favor the jet stream to be a little bit more meridional. And another reason for that is when we go look at the Northern Pacific, this is where we get into what's called the NPO or the Northern Pacific Oscillation. And these water temperatures across the Northern Pacific um, up by the Aleutian Islands, a little bit further uh, to the west of those islands, there's what's called the blob. And there you can see it there on the top center of your screen. This is temperature anomalies. So this shows above average sea surface temperatures across the northern central Pacific. And what this will allow is, or usually trends the jet stream in doing, it allows for a more meridional pattern or a more active pattern in the jet stream. A lot of times when we see the blob form, we have really active winters, really deep troughs that dig and cut across the northern tier of the United States. But it also allows for periods of where we may get a split phase, where we may go from an active period to where we may go cooler than average with above average storm systems to a it may switch expect to see that here this winter um, and then you can also see the uh, N NAO the northern Atlantic oscillation we are very warm across the northern Atlantic as well for this time of year so those two factors will play a role in how the jet stream responds this um, right now, we are trending towards um, a near average winter in terms of temperature, maybe slightly above average, just depending on how those factors play a role and how deep the jet stream cuts south and how long those blocking patterns will remain before it switches back to a positive phase where we warm up a little bit. We may see some rain um, and some thawing. Um, with that being said, there are a lot of factors that play into this forecast. And um, with all those things combined, that is where we are getting our um, above average precipitation and above average or near average temperatures. Ryan? I think that explains it pretty well there. Uh, so overall, I don't think we're going to 
you know, I think people are going to see the above average temperatures. They may think, well, we're not going to get snow. That's not the case at all. We're still going to have these little bursts of cold air. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of how prolonged that is, how these jet streams can play, uh, play a factor in how prolonged that is. And like Caleb said, you know, are we going to have these active periods that continue? Or we're going to have breaks between these active periods. So a lot of things go into the winter forecast here. I hope that breaks it down a little bit better for you guys to help understand what we're kind of looking at and how we're kind of forming these conclusions. But overall, there's still some uncertainty with things. But when all said and done, an above average year for precipitation would be expected. And then temperatures that are about normal, if not leaning just above a normal, would be uh, the expectation as well. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We will for sure get back with you and answer any questions that you do have. With that being said, you guys have a great day. We'll catch you guys next time here at Michigan Storm Chasers.